Hello there, this is no nickname. Welcome back to another Age of Empires 3 video. I'm going to be commentating another match, this time between me of course as the British and a second lieutenant by the name of Witherflower as the Japanese player. He was a second lieutenant while I'm a first lieutenant so I outrank him slightly. Although I haven't actually played all that much for the past like a year, so I still kind of suck, but I guess I'm getting into it again. I'm trying to play this more because it's actually quite fun still, and I guess it's kind of like riding a bike, although not quite. So the map is Bayo or Bayo, Bayo. I don't know. It's pronounced somehow, but I don't know. It's everyone's favorite map, of course with its open uh, openness and you can't really build anywhere except for in your base and a few other locations and I was being sarcastic by the way when I said it was everyone's favorite because a lot of people actually hate it I don't mind it all that much it's just a map getting the treasure of course as you always want to get easy treasures as well as building my manor house there for that extra villager And of course, hurting my hunt here. So I just explored the map. It's Discovery Age, so there's actually nothing to talk about other than... Oh look, I selected a deck! Wow. My deck is of course overpowered again. As one of you pointed out in the last video. Can't remember why I called my deck that anyway. It was ages ago. I guess it is overpowered. And I actually think I forgot what civilization was there for a moment, so I had to check that. Even though I just saw his monk, so I'm not, not sure how I forgot that. So I believe his base is right about there. Yes, there it is. Sending those three villagers as well. I'm doing everything standard here. Really? Discovery Age. Right. So eventful, isn't it? And there I do actually find that scout treasure though, which uh, is kind of important. I like to get that if I can. As the scout is very useful, especially if you stealth it and put it near their base, or preferably in front of their base or somewhere like that, so you can actually see if their arm is coming. Only problem is if they bring their explorer, then they well, they detect it and just kill it, but. You still get a warning, at least once. I do believe I put it like beside his base, uh, like below it or something, in this game. Doesn't really help me out all that much, but I use it a bit. So there I did actually get that scout treasure. Spamming commands all over the map, of course. Just in case I pass out for a minute and then my explorer will still have selected the map. I mean, explore the map. Ready. Yes, Hunter. I'm not sure why I did it, I'll just do it to keep my APM up or something. Ready. And now I am aging yes. up. Oh wait, I'm not. There I am aging up. With the outpost wagon and 200 coin. Yes. Pretty nice one to get. Right. Yes. The coin lets you not gather coin in while edging up and still being, a, being able to make units, which is of course nice, so you can gather more food and wood instead. I'm going for musketeers this game, so I don't need that much coin anyway, so that 200 coin actually gets you quite far. And you saw I sniped that one treasure guard, and I'm not gonna fight those two riflemen though, because they would murder me, but I'm gonna just stand near it and wait for my uh, sharpshooter ability or whatever it's called to recharge, and then I'll get that once I can shoot another of those guardians, because my explorer can take on the last one in melee mode, where they actually do reduce damage. I'm going for the market here again, and uh, I believe I'm 
going to get hunting dogs. Uh, someone commented in my last video and came with quite a bit of suggestions, which uh, some of them, well, well, most of them were actually very good ideas. So I'm going to try that hunting dogs instead. I believe I messed it up a bit later though because I didn't actually have coin to uh, research it, but oh well. So my outpost wagon is here, and I decided I decided to build it there. Uh, there, yes, there, there we go. Yeah, so it's always shrine there. I don't, I'm not too concerned about that because even if he sees my outpost wagon, he can't kill it this early in the game. He doesn't have any military. But the reason I built it there is because there is a herd of turkeys there, as well as a gold mine. So it's very nice to protect that. Now I'm going for that last treasure as well. The, I believe it's something like 235 food, which uh, is of course very useful this early in the game. Let me get an advantage in military. So I'm making five musketeers now and immediately cancel them, as is normal. No, it's not, but I decided to make pikemen instead because I saw he had shrines really close to my base. And this he is Japanese, so it's always useful to get a bunch of pikemen to just run around the map and kill off all these shrines. That both stops his economy up a bit, because they do produce resources of course, that's why they build it out on the map near the food sources. And also because it uh, population blocks him if he doesn't have that many shrines. Which is of course an added bonus. So the shrines are kind of a they help the Japanese player, if you don't kill them, then they actually hurt them. Indirectly, at least. So now I'm going for some Musketeers, and stylishly population block myself by sending that to Villager shipment. It's still better though, to get Villagers other than to miss a few units. But yes, I actually got five units out there anyway, that was incredibly lucky actually. Built them on the last millisecond or something. You see, I'm taking out the shrines, I already took down one, and that means I can gather that food. At least if he doesn't kill my outpost and take back that herd. Scouting at this base a bit with my scout there too. Actually, I'm just running slightly diagonally away from it. Oh well. And taking up more shrines. Uh, if not just on the minimap, there's a large red clump of units there, moving towards my villagers, and I hope I notice them quite soon. There we go. So I've got to garrison all my villagers here. Run! Ah, he killed one. So I'm bring my bring my musketeers back now, but I'm leaving my pike because they won't do any good in that fight anyway. And I do have enough musketeers here to force this back, I believe. At least when he's just standing there losing all his units. It does kill my explorer, but I've seen what I need to see anyway. And there it did actually take out those pikemen, which uh, was unfortunate. I won't be able to take out his shrines as effectively then, without those pikemen. But I, I believe I'm still ahead in economy. Well, it hasn't gone on for this long, but I believe I'm ahead in economy by at this point, seeing as I've taken out a few shrines and defended my villagers reasonably well. Killed one, but and now it's actually killing more. He's quite good at this uh, harassing this player, certainly. So it does do this pretty much continuously throughout the game. And he actually kills a few villagers there and gets away with, I believe, no losses, which is good for him. I decided to go to that hunt there, though, and uh, see if I can get away with that without actually having to defend it all that much. And there he decides to attack my musketeers, which was a bad idea, because I actually have more units than him, and also do some nice focused firing here of his weakened units. Well, I'm trying anyway, and 
managed to kill that with quite few losses. Now he does actually take out my barracks, <laughs> which is unfortunate. And those vil those uh, musketeers there didn't actually make it out. At the same time, he's attacking my villagers, so it's uh, he's multitasking. He's quite nice. Of course, the garrison both in outpost, which is helping me out quite a bit, by the way, that outpost. There, I decide to make builders again. Always a good idea. And now decide to plant my musketeers right under this outpost. Actually, no, I don't do that. I plant them between my outpost and my base because I need to defend both places while I get a bigger army. I'm not ready to attack him, but I, he's not ready to kill me either. There's a bit of a stalemate now, even though he's actually attacking with his entire army, so never mind, there's, there's no stalemate. And I, I can kill that quite nicely, actually, especially with t uh, Town Center Fire and a decent number of Musketeers. I'm able to get a nice surround on his army here with my Town Center on one side, five Musketeers shooting him down on the left side and also my army on the right side. have to take those on the left side back a bit, but... I'm able to kill off a few of those uh, units with the clubs, not sure what they're called. And there he does actually decide to retreat out of there. Takes out a few more villagers at the outpost, but at least I do have the outpost there. Should probably make one more mana with that 139 uh, wood there, but oh well. So, I believe I sent 700 food. Yes, I did. I could have sent 700 gold to perhaps age up. Seeing as I did force his army back, and it would be maybe nice to capitalize on that and get even more ahead, but I decided to instead stay in age 2 for now. Because I have quite an advantage and I want to push that advantage. Start to take out his shrines, and he can't really do anything about this. Snipe that weak shrine there as well. That my pikemen were taking out in the start of the game. Now I'm also making more pikemen, actually. Because uh, I want to get ready to start attacking his base. And maybe take out a few military buildings or something like that. He's coming in with five Ashigaru here. Which is not enough to kill a villager in one shot, so I believe actually all of them get into the town center. So, not a good engagement for him. Let's get those villagers out, villagers out again too, preferably yes. And they're actually <laughs> intercept his army, that was quite nice. He apparently either doesn't see it or doesn't want to attack. Probably the latter, because I outnumbered him quite a bit. And now I'm basically just charging on this base. And uh, trying to take out any shrines I find on my way as well. I don't want to go in his base quite yet. I have quite a bit of army, but he can probably defend decently still if I go right into his base. But I'm gonna go into the outskirts a bit and see what I can find there of destroyable structures and units. I decided to go for that uh, uh, villager health upgrade too, by the way. Should have gotten that a bit earlier, actually, but at least he won't be able to harass as effectively now anymore. And there he messes up that battle quite a bit. He, like, runs past my army while I shoot at it. His army, I mean, and loses a few units there. So, right now I'm actually attacking his army directly. Not very cost effective, but he's killing quite a bit. I'm still winning, but I uh, should probably pull out of here about now. Because he's getting reinforcements while I'm not really. At least not quick enough. So I do believe I retreat soon enough when I realize he's actually cost effectively winning that battle, even if I'm killing all his units. And those Ashigara are actually greeted by a welcoming party of 
bowmen and musketeers. So he just has to walk right through my base awkwardly now. Let's see if he can get away. I don't think he actually shoots anything. And yes, he's just being murdered. Now he's actually killing my units uh, near the shrines to the northeast. Not quite sure I noticed that until it was too late. There I did, and it's too late. Yes, I mean so. Yes, yes, yes. Red man, I saw. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. And yeah, he's actually still falling with his armor there, so should get out of there. He's actually still not uh, found that location of villagers there, and those are. If he could uh, get up there and kill those, that would be very bad for me, of course. But I doubt he's even scouted that part, because there's no shrines or anything, and... Since he built shrines everywhere else, there was food, so I would assume he would have done there as well. So, forcing this army back quite nicely. He obviously can't fight that. You can also see on the score, I have, I have a very massive advantage at this point, so it's just about delivering the killing blow at this point. I decided to go for those shrines again, just to limit his economy, while expanding my own with upgrades. I do want to point out I have way too many villagers on gold, and I've had that pretty much the entire game. That was a mistake on my part. I should probably take quite a few off, and I, uh, did I actually do that now? Or maybe my villagers are just idle, I don't know. Oh no, I took them out to get into that tower, of course. And there they're actually forced to go back to my base and do other tasks, like gathering more useless gold. Or coin. But I'm still actually killing him quite nicely. Uh, those were just reinforcements actually, but I'm still killing his main army with it. While walking into his base, and there's some nice juicy villagers to kill. So I'm getting a nice round on those, as he apparently didn't see it or something. And they kind of get to run away, but I mean, they're dead. And there actually does say GG. And I thought it was pretty good. He did nice at harassing me in this game. I uh, outproduced him basically just though, and was able to take out every attack he actually sent to my way eventually. He had a few Naginata riders up there to maybe raid me a bit more effectively, but I don't think it would have mattered. So you can see the graphs here. I. Well, I had a better economy than him. Not by that much actually when it comes to resources, but. Still was able to outproduce him. He actually only made Ashigaru, with the exception of a few cavalry in the end there. And I made other units as well, but still almost had as much musketeers, so... That pretty much tells the story. Take a look at some of these graphs here. Villager count uh, was quite nice. I actually believe I produced villagers for most of the game, which is actually something I often have trouble remembering to do. I have villagers isn't too pretty on my part. Uh, Japanese has to have a very easily manageable economy though, with the orchards and everything, so... It's not entirely fair there, but... And he did harass me quite a bit, so it's not very strange. Dance for seconds is nothing. So, yes. I believe I pretty much have covered everything there is to cover. Well, no, I haven't, but... Probably like a million different mistakes I made, but that I didn't point out at all, but it was still a pretty good game, so I will see you in the next video.